Good afternoon, everybody. It's Lemmy and Finish Trap. And, of course, today is the 22nd of July. I worked on the color, too, in uh, contrast to fix the washed-out look. I'm very sorry about that. Look wasn't really intended. What happened was, is a couple of um, weeks ago, we had a activity going on here. We needed to use the the video decoder for something else and so it was it had to be reset to another video input so kind of resulted in some uh adjustments having to be made and so we finally fixed it um i don't know if we've made it any better or worse but i i just looked at it on the um on the recording setup and it looks like it's better anyway today we're going to talk about three unique things okay ready one demonic position multiple personality disorders and michelle and me which i think is going to be really interesting i started talking about this uh yesterday and then of course unfortunately we kind of got interrupted and then of course it was really starting to get hot in here and i wanted to redo it so let's start with first of all what is demonic possession and multiple personality disorder and how this um applies to us um first of all demonic possession is um you can have a demon that takes residence in your body um and when he does that his job is to destroy you it wants to devour you an example of this was when uh jesus casted out the demons out of the maniac and he and the demons asked to be cast into the into the head of swine and they were cast into swine and then they encourage the swine to go down to the river and drown i believe this is in the book of matthew of the of the new testament and um so the first question that goes through my head upon hearing that story is why would somebody who really wanted a body so bad actually want to kill that body and, and that's a great question because unfortunately we see these type of demonic situations over and over again where the demons clearly are not um a human ally they are a true and truly un uh friendly to humans and human hosts and i'm gonna see to use the term hosts for this because i think we need to specify explain that the soul and the body are not necessarily the one and the same okay a lot of people think that the the two bodies are the same and i'm if you're wondering i'm looking down on the floor i'm looking at the two cats <laughs> they're sitting there um but anyway that's another story anyway so what we're talking about here is is that these people these spirits are out there looking for a host to destroy they get their jollies destroying hosts um and to do this they can also appear as an ally or a friend but remember what jesus said by the roots ye shall know them meaning by the way that they carry themselves and as you watch a, dem a, a demoniac um you'll see that some of the stuff that they do is just seems to be totally um lack of common sense and so they do these strange things um that results in very bizarre behaviors putting it bluntly um very different than um multiple personality disorders also can also be related to demoniac and demon possessions as well because a lot of times um multiple personality or disorders like we one time described it can have one of three type of um results one total disconnect between the two entities two um connect where the entity feels that they're in the passenger seat and someone else is driving the car or um they can feel as if somebody bound to gag them throw them in the trunk of the car in other words they're going for a ride but they don't want to be there <laughs> okay of the three environments you really uh number two which isn't so bad 
can also result in the fact is that you are voluntarily giving a steering wheel to someone else. Um, this is a very different situation. As I said, most demoniacs are out there to destroy you. They want to ruin your life. They want to make your life miserable because they get the pleasures doing that. And actually, they get bounties for every life that they destroy. So, um, very different than me and Michelle. Because me and Michelle's life, I am, I am not here to destroy Michelle's life. Okay? I love Michelle. I want Michelle to be happy. And I'm trying my hardest to make Michelle happy and to grow. And that's a very different situation. Um, Michelle and I are fully interacting with each other. We see each other. We talk to each other. And we know what each other's up to. And we have been very happily together for a long time. And so since 2010, um, with, and we originally got together in February of 2010, but by May 1st, or Beltane, is when we finally tied the knot. So therefore, you got these three years we've been together, and we have seen our a combined life become an extremely wonderful existence. Now, you have to remember now, as I said, I separated the soul from the body for one sake, which is... We are so used to saying, this is my body. This is my life. I'm doing it my way. It doesn't work that way. Because the truth is, is your body is like, a, for a good example, it's like a car. You may have be the only person that's on the title and the registration. But... If you're a married couple, your spouse will probably be on the title and registration too, which means it's a jointly owned car or jointly owned body in our case. So that means that like in any married couple is that me and Michelle have always to look at the situation and how it affects the general coverage of both, not just one or not just the other. There's so many things in this world where there's a lot of selfishism of me, 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 my, myself, I, you don't count, you know, I'm number one. Um, that's, that's not good, okay? That's not good because, remember, we are to be excellent to one another. We are to always be respectful of each other. But that means, especially for twin souls, is that we have to respect each other's soul as well. And that means that the body, for example, if I want to get Michelle down to a size 16 dress and Michelle doesn't care if she's a size 28, well, um, obviously, um, there has to be a kind of a dialogue between the two. It's kind of in the middle. It says, okay, let's see. Well, if we can work out a compromise that we can both live with. That's what marriage is by the way marriage is between two physically separate people it's the same thing it's a give and take it is where you guys work together for a common consensus and that's very important because it's the same when you have two souls in one body the two have to work together because they're a team there is no me and you it's us and it always has been us even before me and michelle joined she always used the term us because she knew that this body was designed for two souls even when she was a little girl so therefore she always said us and her mother always kept asking her what do you mean and michelle said me myself and i <laughs> okay <laughs> well i think michelle did that was because it was easier for Michelle at that time to understand. What do you mean by me, myself, and I? Well, that's three people, right? Um, then, of course, when me and Michelle joined officially, it was really easy for us to both kind of accept each other because Michelle has already had been interacting with me as a spirit guide, even as a little girl. So it was really, really a big um step in the right direction for both of us when we finally conjoined and said now we're together now we are together because we are twin souls and it is said that when two twin souls join it usually means it is their last iteration on earth and then after this they're not coming back again that's okay i don't mind it i mean i've been here 20 i've been here 22 times 21 times to michelle's 23 this is my 20 well, i could say this is really my 22nd time if you want to get picky um, this is Michelle's 23rd, and um, 
We've seen a lot of things. We've seen so much. Good, bad, and the ugly. Um, the, it's it's just doggone amazing that I, we managed to keep our head above water, even in these hard times. Now, um, so the point is, is me and Michelle do not meet the terminology of a person who is possessed by demonic forces, and we certainly don't meet the terminology of a person who is facing multiple personality disorders, at least not in Category 1 and 3, if you consider 2, which is, is that it's a cooperative arrangement between two people to share the same body, which unfortunately DSM-4 and 5 do not mention that agreement. Talking to several people in the mental health field, me and Michelle's situation is a blessing and not a curse. And it is not necessarily going to be unacceptable. It's a good arrangement. It helps Michelle to recover. Michelle's MGAF had gone up so much since we joined. It was like 30, it was like 25, and now it's like 40s and, uh, what is it? 43, 44, I think. 43, 44 years. Okay, so anyway, the point is, is that, let me ask Michelle, since obviously this is the first time we've been able to do a video in a long time, I mean, what do you feel about this arrangement? Um, well, I think it's been a good arrangement. I think we have had a lot of good times together, and we're still growing, and we're still, um, you know, learning more about each other. I mean, it's kind of nice. It's kind of like the Travelocity commercial. You'll never room alone. You always feel like you got someone there to talk to, even when the rest of the world has basically plugged sticks in their ears and said, I don't want to listen to you. So we get a chance to, um, you know, we grow and we mature and we have learned to love each other and we have always loved each other from the very beginning of time. And that's what twin souls are. Twin souls are truly, you know, the yin and the yang have, has combined and there's been great happiness has happened. Yeah. And uh, you speaking of happiness, I see two cats running around the house. Yeah, they're there. There's Rusty. He's over here on this side. Oh, no, we just went over there. <laughs> Big fuzzball is laying on the floor, too. Um, but uh, back to us. Back to us. Um, I think that... I mean, the, when you talk about twin... When you talk about... Bite, when you talk about multiple personality disorder, it's called a disorder for a reason. And that is because it's... It's not a functional, positive thing. Okay, that's what the word disorder means. Just as the word disease or disease. I don't know how you make an S E Z, but disease and disorder means not ordered, not eased. Okay, so if you're sick, you're not at ease, you're diseased. And if you're not, don't have order in your life, you have disorder. Thank you very much, grammatician. <laughs> okay. But I still want to know is how do you feel? Um, why do you think people sometimes mistakenly say we are suffering from multiple personality disorder? I think it's because it's so rare, like you said in one of your other videos, that people don't really understand that it's you know, it's 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 like any kind of a couple. Um, when you have a good marriage between a man and a man, a woman and a woman, or a man and a woman, and there's a lot of love and joy, and there's a lot of sharing, but also, unfortunately, there's a lot of arguing often um, because they're, they're different people. It's it's the same way. I mean, you. But what makes a marriage work is when the two sides can sit down, maybe over a cup of coffee, and say, "Okay, look, let's look at the problem. Let's see if we can fix the problem." Yeah, you know, so that's what makes um, it work. It's so easy for people to forget that that um, a couple, a marriage couple, has to, you know, solve the day-to-day -day issues together as a team. It's not one. It's not dysfunctional, or at least we hope not, where the man says, I'm sorry, my wife, but I don't give a care. I'm doing it my way. You can go suck eggs. That's not a marriage. 
That's disorder. That's disorder. That's what multiple per that's what multiple personality disorder is. It's the same thing. It's where one entity says to the other entity, I'm doing it my way and you're not getting any. That's disorder. That's disorder. Okay? And it certainly causes disease. Yeah, that one causes dis-ease. Because if you look at what happens is the other person that feels like they're being... Uh, that their whole life is up in the shambles where they feel like they're not part of something. That's what they're supposed to be part of. Or if you have the mentality of saying, this is my body, who the fuck are you? Yeah, I've I seen that before too. What You got to people who say is... You know, one that says it's very possessive and says, This is my body. You're not wanted here. Get out. See, my name is on the birth certificate. This is my body. Get out. Yeah, and that's exactly uh, what we were talking about here is that disorder is, it really is destructive. Destructive means to take apart or to break down or to f cause it to fail. Okay. So, um, so it causes the whole person's life to totally unravel. It does. Um, in true multiple personality disorder, the whole life is un just totally unraveling. Because there's no continuity. There's no consistency. Everything's just totally messed up from the beginning. You know. Oh, that's certainly a very interesting point, I have to admit. But how can we get people to understand that we are not suffering from multiple personality disorder? I don't think we can. I mean, I showed people your video, and I don't think it's going to really make any sense to a lot of people. Yeah, I, I think... By the way, the video Michelle's talking about is called My Pet Peeves. Yes, okay. And uh, I want to put that video in this one here. Well, I don't think you need to because pretty much you explained everything that the video said. And then some. Yeah. But most important thing, folks, is I want to hear from you what you got to say. Because I want to hear your opinions. Good, bad, ugly. If you want to talk about it here on conference, com comment on this channel here. Right below there is comments. Please leave a comment and we'll discuss it there. And if you have enough questions, maybe we'll take you through your questions and put them on the air and try to answer them as best as we can and see if we can find more supporting documentation. There really is very little on us. There's very little. Just like you said in your last video, we are an endangered species. There's like, there's only like four of us in the whole world. Yeah. Okay, for adults anyway, for adults. Um, also, if you rather want to see a private, if you want to send it as a private email to me instead, if you're like too, if you're too embarrassed or you're not sure if it's a public question, but you want to really know the answer, please do not be afraid to email me. It is it's L U M I F I N I S T R A at gmail dot com. So that's L. U M I F I N I S T R A at gmail dot com, and of course, if those you're watching this through other sources and want to subscribe to my channel, we have made you very convenient tiny URL to make it easier to subscribe to the channel. It is http colon forward slash forward slash www.tinyurl.com forward slash L U M I F I N I S T R A. Hit enter and then click on the subscribe tab. And also, don't forget that um, you don't know what to learn, learn me finister means. It means enlighten it window. Thanks. Yeah, it's actually it's one of the things that you have been, Loom, is an enlightenment for me and for a lot of people. Or else you can say, window of enlightenment. Well, literally from translation from Italian, it means light, through, light, light of the window. Light window. Enlightenment window, or window of enlightenment. But still, you have been. Thank you. 
So, again, to all of you who have watched this video, please do not be afraid to like, share, subscribe, and of course let others know of this channel as well. And if you are watching this um, through one of the cross posts by Michelle on Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, whatever, please do not forget that that is not Michelle. That is how she wrote this video. This is Lemmy Ann Finistra. And Michelle has just got my permission to share this video with you through her connections. And um, so we look forward to seeing more from you specifically and directly. And also, if I may, yeah, if you have questions about my videos, which are different than Louie's because I have my own channel, send them to me. If they're for Lumi, send them to her. Do not send them questions to me. Uh, because we respectfully allow each other to answer their own specific questions that are directed to their independent email addresses. So, if you want to find my channel, it's http colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube y-o-u-t-u-b-e dot com forward slash u-s-c-r forward slash B I C H E L A four and my email address is H uh, is B I C H E L A three at gmail dot com, and lastly, yes, we have our own private website which we have had for a long time. We haven't really focused on it much. We should talk about it some more. It's H T T P colon forward slash forward slash P I N K R O S E dot D H I S dot O R G. And you can go there and watch some of our videos that we have um, saved for you. So you can watch them and enjoy some of the earlier productions. And uh, we'll be have, eventually we plan to add some new videos sometime soon. There also is on this website, and Michelle's talking about there is also, a, of course, some, a brief biography of Michelle and me. And um, we're going to still work on that sometimes. So, yeah, you know, as soon as, this, as soon as summer ends, we will be working on that page and trying to fix it up and add more to it. By the way, I, I know this isn't really about this, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. What's the, what's the plans for the future for the studio? Because I haven't talked to you about that. I'm thinking is, is that... Given what's going on in the building right now, right now, Lomas, I'm thinking is, is that we might need to consider relocating um, by next year. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. I remember that. You were talking about because uh, there's a lot of personal issues, but also there's a lot of environmental issues as well as temperatures, heat, humidity, and in fact, there's no central air. Plus, of course, um, the, the environment has just not been very good. Right. So you're thinking about is is it's time to move on and find a better place to live. Maybe go where um, we can go ahead and have a private life of our own. Um, have you figured out where to go yet with that? No, because I might, well, sort of, sort of. <laughs> well, okay, let me explain. I'm thinking about going north north okay but where because you've had like four or five different places you're considering yeah um four places um first actually five okay we'll, we'll break it down by states first i'm thinking well, first i'm thinking of alaska okay uh that's kind of far away yes it is really far away and you have a passport to go there because you got to go through Canadian airspace. Unless you went into Edward Snowden. Yeah, and where there's no passport, you're stuck in the transit area, and you can't go anywhere. Kind of sucks. Yeah, definitely would suck. Um, the other choice is to go to Maine, and uh, which would be a lot easier and a lot closer to get to, say, Bangor. Because it's, I can take the I can take the Amtrak up to um, Bangor, Maine, and the connecting shuttle. And, uh, but either way, I'm going to still need money for, you know, apartment, first month's, last month's security, plus, of course, moving jerk and all that. 
So I'm thinking is is that maybe by next year maybe we could have like a couple maybe about a thousand two thousand dollars in the bank and then we could take that money. That wouldn't help us move, Michelle. That would just be a little bit on the short side. Yeah, but on the other hand, if we get up to Maine with a thousand dollars, we can go at least see what it looks like, and if we like what we see. And I find a nice place. Maybe I'm looking for an abandoned cabin or something. Maybe in a logging trail. Um, that I could go ahead and establish my own homestead. And um, off the grid housing. Off the grid housing, definitely. That would be fun. But I have to say, it's certainly going to be a lot harder to find off the grid housing. Unless you can find out of the owner of the property land because almost everybody owns land. Almost everybody, land is almost always owned by somebody, even if it's the state or the federal government. So you're going to have to find out is if it is a piece of state or federal land is, do they, would they allow that? Oh yeah, definitely. We'd have to find out from the Department of the Interior and Department of Environmental Protection Agency in Maine about that. Yeah. The last day I looked into is New Hampshire. Okay. I love the quote. I love the logo. Live free or die. <laughs> live free or die. I can live with that. So can I. So okay. Anyway, so that's the way it goes right now as far as the main plan. So as far as the studio goes, so I'm gonna try to put money away and maybe we can work on improving the videos in the studio for next time. Yeah, you know, I still like to see. I still like to see the studio really grow. I mean. So we definitely, they definitely need the chroma key material. We need the chroma key material, and we also need to um, continue to work on um, making the videos better. Yeah. So for right now, folks, I think that's a wrap. But the point is, is that I want you to know that I love you, Michelle loves you, and Mother Asna, and of course Father God loves you too, and we want to hear from you. So make sure to, don't forget to like and share, and I will see you soon.